we're going to turn the page and consider Yahweh's testimony on Shabbat, on why he is encouraging us to set this day apart and make it special. When we consider that this is God's testimony, you, uh, if you are a Christian, you should be scratching your head and say, how in the hell did we get to, uh, to Sunday worship? Sunday is the first day of the week. There is no sanction for it. It is uh, derived entirely from the pagan religions of old. Sun gods were always worshipped on the Lord's day. The Lord is Satan's title. It is um, uh, also from Baal, which is Satan's name. And uh, God uh, tells us that uh, that sun gods are um, are worshipped on Sunday. That's the first day of the week. That the day that you ought to set apart to uh, pay attention to your relationship with him, to understand what he is offering, to understand his formula, to understand his timeline, to understand his means of salvation, is the Shabbat. So he says you should observe. Now what does observe mean? Now, if you read your uh, one of your English translations, this, and I'm reading from Dabadim words, Deuteronomy 5.12, it will say you should keep. But shamar means to use the perception of sight to remain focused on something, to observe your surroundings and then respond in a rational way to what you see. It is uh, shamar, the, the benefit of sight that enables us to read. I am using shamar now to share Yahweh's written testimony with all of us. You shall observe. Be aware of. Pay attention to. Carefully consider. The Shabbat, translated, transliterated, if you will, Sabbath. Shabbat is uh, the Hebrew word for seventh day. It is also the uh, Hebrew word for promise. And so, if you want to know what God's promise to humankind is, you'll find it coexisting with the concept of the seventh day. So you should observe, pay close attention to, closely examine, carefully consider the Shabbat. Well, that tells you right there how the Shabbat should be observed. Consider what it represents. Examine what God had to say about it, and you will be observing the Shabbat. If you instead turn it into a religious observance and you, and you impose rules and say, you know, I ought not do this, I ought not do that, I ought not do the other thing, then you will be disregarding what God said. He introduced the Shabbat. This is what he etched in stone saying, observe it. Now, if, if your mindset, having come out of religion, is that observation is equivalent to doing and uh, and keeping and therefore kiss and cousin to obeying then you need to cleanse your mental slate shamar means to observe and it's an active observation it means that 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 you closely examine what is available to you and in this case what is available to us regarding Yahweh's instructions on the seventh day and the promises he's made there uh, about the seventh day, all of which can be gleaned from reading his Torah. That it is about observation, consideration, and then responding to what you learn. It is the whole purpose of, of having a soul and a nasalma conscience. A being a conscience and having a conscience. The difference between animals and, uh, and plants is that animals have a soul, which means they can observe their environment and respond to it. So you shall observe, pay attention to, closely examine, consider the seventh day, the promise of seven. And recognize that it is set apart, that it is special. As Yahweh your God instructed. Everything you need to know is conveyed right there. Now he's going to give us more insights regarding this day. But that tells you everything you needed to know. Observe it by examining, 
what God had to say about it. Observe it by closely examining and carefully considering God's teaching, guidance, and direction regarding this day. And first and foremost is to recognize that the Shabbat is the seventh day, not the first day of the week. It ain't Sunday. And the second is to understand that there is a direct connection between seven, Shabbat, and God's promise to us. Also, never underestimate the importance of Kodesh set apart. You see, the spirit of God, the Ruach Kodesh, is the set-apart spirit. Set-apart defines the spirit's nature. Set apart from God. That means that the spirit is part of God, set apart from God, for the purpose of serving us. According to Yahweh, Yahusha is Kodesh Kodesh. When you repeat a word in Hebrew, it makes that word... Uh, geometrically amplified. So, unlike the spirit who is simply set apart from God, and that means it's part of God's nature, set apart from God. So God is spiritual in nature, so the spirit of God can just simply be set apart from God. But since God is spirit, to set an aspect of God apart from him in a corporeal way, in a physical way, means that Yahusha had to be set apart twice, exponentially set apart. Set apart, set apart, Kodesh, Kodesh. Set up an aspect of God, set apart from him, but then diminished, transferring from spiritual, therefore energy, to matter. Set apart twice. And in that second aspect of setting apart, of course, tremendously diminished, as is required to transfer from energy to matter. Diminished at the square of the speed of light. When you understand the concept of set apart and most set apart, then you're in a position to understand how God is one and he can set some aspect of his spiritual energy apart as the set-apart spirit and remain one. And how he can set apart some aspect of his spiritual energy, diminish it, and translate it into a corporeal presence and remain one. And when you do that, you recognize that a focus on Yahusha as opposed to Yahweh is a fool's folly. The only purpose of Yahusha is to introduce us to Yahweh. Very few things are as important as the information that is conveyed here. Now, when you understand that seven is the essential day that we are to observe and that it conveys God's promise, what is God's most important promise? To provide five benefits to those who choose, through careful observation, to respond to the terms and conditions of the covenant. God's foremost promises are presented in the opening book of the Torah, where he promises to Abram, who became Abraham, five sensational benefits of accepting the terms and conditions of his covenant relationship. So God's promises to us that are the most important to us are eternal life provided from Passover. They are perfection so that all of our flaws are removed, which is achieved through matzah to adopt us into his family, his covenant family, as his children, which occurs on Bukhodam, to enrich and to empower us, which occurs on a day named after the Shabbat, seven Shabbat, Shabuah, seven Sabbaths. Those are the five benefits of the covenant. It is why the first four Moed Mikre, the four that I have just named, were fulfilled by Yahusha and the set of heart spirit in the fourth millennia of human existence after being expelled from the garden. 
It is our means to re-enter the garden as God's children. Our means to grow, to thrive, to live forever with God. This known, we have uh, Patrick calling in from Miami that has a, uh, a question. Hello, uh, Patrick. Welcome to the program. Uh, yes, I had a question that I, I, spoke, I said to the uh, screener, but um, I'm, I'm more interested that you're speaking about the covenants of uh, God, and you haven't seemed to mention Jesus Christ. Uh, is that uh, yeah. conscious of the black? I mean, uh, Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Is there, uh, is there anyone, was anyone named Jesus or Jesus Christ in the first century CE? Was there a person named Jesus Christ that lived in the first century of the Common Era? Uh, I, I do believe so. I, I mean, well, you believe so. When, when was the letter J invented? I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, really. I mean, it is the seventeenth. The letter J was invented in the seventeenth century. Yes. I, Christ. Christ is not a last name, and you can't have no one named Jesus could have lived prior to the seventeenth century. So how could you have had a Jesus Christ? Do you know what Christ means in, uh, in Greek? Not a quote. Drugged. 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 It's the application of drugs. I, 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 I mean, I don't understand. You asked me if I, uh, why I didn't mention a Jesus Christ. There could not have been a Jesus Christ in the first century. It's impossible. The, the J for Jesus wasn't even invented until the 17th century. There's no correlation whatsoever between Jesus and the individual whom you think you're talking about's actual name. None. And his title, his last name most certainly wasn't Christ. And Christ isn't even an accurate translation or transliteration of his title. If you don't know his, if you don't know his name and you don't know his title... Why are you concerned about someone whose name you don't know and whose title you don't know? Well, I was not really thinking of his name as in the person that, um, himself. Then why don't you know his name? If you, why are you concerned about somebody whose name you don't even know? Well, it's, it's, I mean, it just doesn't mean it's not important. I mean, if, uh, I, if, if, if this person was important to you, wouldn't you know his name? I, I, I suppose so, but I mean, it, it's not. I suppose so, huh? But Patrick, why don't you stay with us after the commercial break, and we'll talk about the person whose name you do not know. Because I do know his name. And his name tells you who he is. So when we return to Shattering Mists after the break, we'll return to Patrick, and we'll introduce the person whose name is seldom known. To uh, Shattering Mist, we have uh, Patrick calling in from Miami. Uh, Patrick's question was: Was it a purposeful uh, act to not mention uh, Jesus Christ uh, in uh, in association with God? And thus far, what I have told Patrick is that there was no person named Jesus Christ living in the first century. That the first person who could have been named Jesus would have had to have been uh, born uh, after the 17th century, when the letter J was uh, first uh, invented and deployed. And uh, that uh, Christ uh, is not a last name, uh, and the uh, the basis in Greek actually means uh, speaks of the application of drugs. Uh, that we had then moved to um, uh, to how can you uh, ask about someone? Uh, think that someone's important if you don't even know their name. In the case of Yausha, Patrick, uh, his name is Yausha. Uh, in the case of uh, Yausha. His name tells you who he is and tells you what he was doing. And so if you don't know his name, you don't know who he is, and you don't know what he was doing. So his name is essential. Yahusha is a compound of, of, uh, of Yahweh and Yasha, which is the Hebrew word for salvation. That name is written over 220 times in the Torah, Prophets, and Psalms. There is no basis whatsoever for Jesus. There's not a single letter that Jesus shares with Yausha. Even the S sound isn't common because in Yausha, it's the SH, not the, uh, the standalone S. Not a single letter is common. There is no basis for uh, Jesus in the Greek text of the so-called Christian New Testament. None. 100% of the time, where his name is presented, it's represented by a placeholder, 
and 100% of the pre-Constantine manuscripts, everything dating prior to 350 CE. No basis whatsoever. It's a complete and utter myth. And it's a myth that has a purpose, Patrick. The myth is to create a new religion that is wholly disassociated from Yahweh. Yahweh is God's one and only name. And yet, Christians don't know it. And they don't know Yahusha's name either, because once you know his name, you know that he is nothing but a diminished manifestation of Yahweh, doing Yahweh's work, which is to save us. The Savior is Yahweh. God is Yahweh. What say you, Patrick? Well, I disagree entirely with their logic. I mean, like, the, there, there are numerous, like, names that get given to uh, uh, Roman poets. I mean, just because I don't refer to uh, Virgil as Virgilius or Cicero or, 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 or Tully as Cicero doesn't mean I'm not referring to them. So my question was not why you didn't mention Jesus Christ. So, 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 it's, so it's okay, Patrick, to change God's name and have the name that you, like Virgil, is at least close to the original name. There is nothing in Jesus that is even remotely accurate. So you think that man is authorized to change God's name? Um, you can call, you can call him anything you want to. Why don't you just call him asshole? Why don't you call him jerk off? I mean, you're, 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 you're authorized. You think you're authorized to change God's name? How can you claim to know him if you don't even know his name? You don't think knowing his name is important? That's an absurd overstatement. I mean, if I use the term Jesus Christ, then this is based on, on Greek, on a Greek language. Uh, it's not. We're not talking about Greek. He wasn't Greek. Uh, and I, I know he wasn't Greek, but that doesn't, doesn't mean that uh, it's, it's equivalent to using an obscenity that doesn't reference him. So he didn't. Uh, he didn't have a. He did not have a Greek name. You understand that there's not a single reference to anything remotely close to Jesus in any of the eyewitness uh, text. Not even remotely. The Iusu, Iusus, Iusun that appears now in Greek manuscripts didn't even exist until well after Constantine created the Roman Catholic Church. A hundred percent of the references to his name were placeholders. And a hundred percent of the uh, eyewitness and historical accounts prior to the mid fourth century. There is no, he did not have a Greek name. There is nothing. There's nothing written out that would be anywhere remotely close to Jesus. It's a complete fabrication. And you're fabricating God's name. I don't think it's a fabrication. I mean, this is clearly the term used by early Christians. I don't, I don't no, 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 actually, there weren't, there weren't early Christians. The, the basis of the, of, the, of the word that you use for Christian was not based on Christos. It was based on Christus. And Christus, and Christus is an entirely different word. That was, my, that was my point. And by the way, there were no early Christians prior to, you'd have to go really all the way into the, the fourth century. And Christus is an entirely different word than Christos. Christos is the application of drugs. Christus is a useful servant. It explains the whole concept of Masaya. Masaya is his actual title. Masaya means an implement doing the work of Yahweh. Christus is accurate. Christos, and therefore Christians, is inaccurate. How in the world can you create a belief that has any credibility if everything in it is inaccurate? We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Shattering Miss, I am your host, uh, Yada. We're having a conversation with uh, Patrick, who, like most Christians, think there was a person uh, who lived named uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, their fact is there was none. The uh, uh, first uh, to recognize uh, uh, Yahusha as the uh, living embodiment of the uh, word of Yahweh, uh, their names were uh, Matanya, Yaukanan, Shimon, Jacob, they were among his disciples. They called him Yahusha. Uh, they called him Yahusha because Yahusha is and was his name. Do you ever refer to uh, your Jesus Christ as the Lord, uh, Patrick? No. 
Well, that's good, because uh, 100% of those who refer to God as the Lord will be excluded from heaven. Do you, uh, uh, do you uh, still believe, uh, Patrick, that there was someone named uh, Jesus uh, that lived in the first century, or um, has the evidence at least compelled you to recognize that, that uh, his name could not have been Jesus, and that his actual name was Yausha, which is extraordinarily meaningful. And now that you know that his name was Yausha, are you going to use it, or are you going to disregard it? Uh, you haven't given me a compelling argument why I cannot use the name Jesus Christ. I mean, now, you, you, you proved to some extent that he was not literally named Jesus Christ, but I, I don't see what Not literally. I mean, there's not a single letter in between Jesus Christ and uh, and what his actual name was. I mean, the only thing close to Jesus in history, uh, particularly related to the English language, would be the, the Druids, and Jesus was the savior of the Druid religion, where the horned one was God. So since, there, since he was, had a Hebrew name, and that he was Hebrew, and that his name is presented in the Torah, Prophets, and Psalms 220 times as Yahusha, is God's testimony in the Torah, Prophets, and Psalms valid enough for you to call him by the name that Yahweh gave to him? Or is that insufficient? Uh, I, I don't see why it's absolutely necessary to use that particular name. I mean, it, it, it arose with the by other things. You know, just, just because because God gave it to him, it's because it is the name that God chose. Uh, you and he's supposed to be the diminished corporeal manifestation of God, and uh, and you've got a religion based on him and. The God that of your religion, from your perspective, chose the name Yahusha, confirmed it 220 times, but that's not good enough for you. That's not sufficient. The very fact that the judge is an overstatement, but I'm saying that calling it, it, it is because the uh, Jesus is the uh, is the savior of the Druid religion, where the horned one is God. Calling him Jesus is a complete, utter, and total disrespect for who he is. You haven't made the argument. I mean, you keep, you keep on saying that, but you haven't actually uh, showed it in your premises. I mean, I allow that. that, that His that, that, name, that, according that. to Yahweh, is Yahusha. If God yeah. said that is his name, it is Yahusha, and it means Yahweh saves. And if that is not good enough from, for you, if you think that God gave you the luxury of changing his name, and that's not sufficient for you. If God's own testimony isn't sufficient an argument for you, then I don't know what is. I'm not changing his name. I'm simply referring to him by another name. Well, I, I, I'm not. Then why don't I call you instead of Patrick? Why don't I call you idiot? I see, there you go. See, you, you're making an overstatement or making an absurd. I mean, firstly, that's, that's, that's a better thing. What's the that's difference that's between me changing your name to idiot and you changing Yahusha's name to Jesus? One's an obscenity, one isn't. I mean, you, you haven't made the argument. I mean, wait a minute. You, but but the only the only individual named Jesus that was known to us is the savior of the Druid religion, where the horned one is God, and that is not that's not. So you think that that calling him the savior of a satanic religion I'm not, I'm is not is worse than calling you an idiot? <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, I don't. It's your your inability to recognize that. God gave him a name. His name is Yahusha. His name has profound meaning. It means that he came in his father's name. His father is Yahweh. He came in his father's name as Yahusha, and that name explains what Yahweh is doing, which is saving us. And you think that it is okay to give him a different name? Absolutely. Referring to him by a different name, that was... Uh... That is based on, on that name to which you refer. Now, you might, you might say that it, it's so. Where's, there, where's your justification for that name? Uh, I mean, okay, if you actually look at the history, uh, at the etymology of Jesus, I mean, it, it is a very clear etymological derivation. Now, it might be too. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. And a hundred percent, and a hundred percent of the pre-Constantine texts, of the historical and uh, biographical accounts, uh, the eyewitness accounts of the life words of Yahusha. A hundred percent of the time, a placeholder is used. You will never find Ayusu, Ayusus, or Ayusun written out once. It was, a con a con it was a contrivance, it was a contrivance of the Roman Catholic Church, specifically designed 
to disassociate Yahweh Shev from Yahweh. You're not, you're not evidence that. Why don't you check? Why don't you check the history? Why don't you Why don't you buy a book on the on the earliest Greek manuscripts and verify what I'm telling you is true? And when you find it's true, are you st are you willing then? Are you willing to combine the combination that God told you that His name is Yahusha and told you what the meaning of Yahusha is and why it's so important with the fact that there is no etymological basis whatsoever for Jesus? If you combine those two things, are you willing to change and call him by his real name, or does evidence and reason mean nothing to you? What, yeah, yeah, keep, keep on saying that. It might actually work. I mean, this is, I don't agree that reason and evidence don't, don't have no impact uh, for me. Furthermore, it, there is actually a, I mean, you might not care for the derivation, but it's, it's there anyway. And, and you have no evidence whatsoever, there's no etymological basis, or, or that, or that the... Patrick, when you talk about blowing smoke up someone's behind and say that there's no etymological evidence when I have told you and it is an absolute irrefutable fact that a hundred percent of the 69 manuscripts that have been unearthed that were produced prior to Constantine's wholesale corruption of the text on behalf of Roman Catholicism that 100 percent of the time and a hundred percent of those texts that a placeholder was used to tell you where to look to find his name. And that Yahweh himself, God, revealed his name 220 times. And so that a hundred percent of the etymological evidence directs you to Yahusha. And that's blowing smoke. That I want to tell you, you've got the disease that, that cripples all religious people, which is that evidence and reason matter nothing to you. You know what's amazing about Christians is God's word means nothing to Christians. God tells you that his name is Yahweh, and you don't use it. He told you that 7,000 times in his Torah, Prophets, and Psalms. He tells you that, that the most set apart his name is Yahusha. Explains who he is. Yahweh in the process of saving us. And yet God's testimony regarding his name is not sufficient for you. You feel that your religion empowers you to change his name, to give him a different name. And yet you will attest to an etymological history that, that goes back on a name who doesn't share a single letter with Yahusha. And you think you're being rational. You know, the same is true, by the way, for, uh, for Christos, which is the uh, Greek word for speaking of application of drugs, that is now used as a last name, as in Jesus Christ, when it isn't even a valid translation of his actual title, which is Masayah, which means the work of Yahweh. And even if it were a proper translation of the work of Yahweh, which the application of drugs, Christo, is not, why would anyone in their right mind take a Hebrew title and transliterate it from the Greek? And if it's a title, not a name, why does it appear after the name? And I'd be like calling Bush president, George King. I mean, everything regarding this individual is messed up in Christianity. You know, for example, Yosho was Torah observant. And the Sermon on the Mount, all he did is focus on the validity of the Torah on how every aspect of the Torah would continue to endure, and that he did not come to annul the Torah, but to affirm the Torah. And yet there's not one Christian who is Torah observant. How can you follow someone whose name you don't know, and you don't do what they did, which is observe the Torah? And the moment you become Torah observant, you cease to be a Christian. But no, thanks to the false prophet Paul, that Torah is a... It's a book that has been annulled. 
at least in their mindset. Now I'm going to give you one more chance, uh, Patrick, to uh, make sense and not to, uh, to blow smoke, but uh, are you Torah observant, Patrick? No. No, then how in the world can you be following a person who was Torah observant if you're not Torah observant? I personally just feel so I not entirely follow the Torah. I mean, there are clear evidences of this in the gospel, so I, I mean, so the argument is wrong. Where, would you, where do you find the word gospel? You know, it means a God's spell. Do you think, do you think there's a word, do you think there's a word gospel, do you think there's a word gospel in the, uh, in the Greek text? The, 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 you have the technique. So instead of actually answering my argument, you discuss etymology, which is clearly not related to my question. So, the, 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 the word is, uh, the word is euangelion. It means beneficial message or, or helpful messenger. Godspell, Godspell is, a, uh, is a 16th century invention based upon the spell of God. Why would you even? Why, I mean, are you just going? Are you just going to change everything? What What else do you want to change? Yeah, maybe maybe you like maybe maybe you like church too, because church is based upon the uh, the name of a pagan goddess, the uh, the daughter of Helios. Church was uh, was her name. She was really cute. You uh, you, prefer, you prefer that to you prefer that to ecclesia, which means called out. I didn't use that term. Also, you aren't capable of actually having discussions without um, discussing the etymology, it appears. I mean, that was not related to my question. Uh, so, so, so you want, well, wait, you want to use words without considering the meaning of those words. So we're going to have a discussion using words, but we want to disregard the meaning of those words. That's so, that's wait, wait, rational. Wait, 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 disregard the meaning. I was actually discussing the meaning itself. You, you the, meaning, the meaning of what? Which, which word do you want to discuss the meaning of, uh, Patrick? Obviously, obviously, I was referring to what gospel means because of the etymology. Uh, well, we'll talk when Shattering Mystery returns, Patrick. We'll consider the meaning of gospel, which is God's spell, when Shattering Mystery returns after the commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back to Shattering Myths. I am your host, uh, Yada. We're having a conversation with uh, uh, Patrick in uh, Miami, who, uh, when I asked him if he was Torah observant, uh, said no. And then, um, uh, even though Yosha was Torah observant, you can't follow him if you're not Torah observant. I uh, transitioned to uh, gospel, and, and I proceeded to tell him that there is no basis for gospel in the, uh, the Greek uh, text. The Greek text uses uh, euangelion. Uh, gospel is a combination, a 17th uh, century invention. It is a combination of got and spell, uh, where uh, euangelion means uh, beneficial messenger. It is a combination of you, meaning uh, beneficial, uh, helpful, and uh, agelios, agelion, uh, meaning um, messenger. And so it is a helpful messenger is the, uh, is the accurate definition of the term. But, um, Patrick, I, ass- I assume that you think it's okay to change that, too. Um, you, you, you missed the point. I mean, clearly, uh, I, I do agree that there's a problem in which you, can, you are incapable of discussing. You don't know the difference in the meaning and etymology because you, you're clearly you're equivocating the two because you know, you know what I meant. I believe if you're going to use words and you're going to attribute words to God, then your words should be accurate. And uh, gospel is not an accurate term. Uh, no, you know, accuracy, wrong, accuracy is uh, when you're talking about God, accuracy is a really important thing. There's a huge all, difference between gospel, which is a pagan term, uh, the spell of God, and uh, euangelion, which is the Greek uh, term, which means a beneficial messenger. There's a huge difference in the two. So we, we ought to use correct terms. But the thing that is troubling here, Patrick, is, for example, when I give you the correct name of Yausha, tell you what it means, tell you why God chose it, tell you why it's important, tell you that God gave it to you 220 times, you don't seem to care. Well, firstly, you, you missed you miss my point entirely. Now, obviously, you said that, that, G, that Jesus Christ, or, or I'm sorry, whoever you were referred to, and you used a different name, I, I think we both know whom we were referring, was Torah observant. I was trying to tell you that he wasn't, and I, I cited the gospel, or, or I was trying to. You said that apparently it was the term was invalid or, or had an improper So you're, 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 telling telling me that, wait a you're telling me that uh, Yosha yeah. was not Torah observant? I mean, are, are you, are you telling? Uh, you're just rambling now, Patrick. It's a waste I, of time. 
I don't know what his last point was because he's uh, he's lost the ability to communicate in, in a reasonable manner. But um, uh, I'm assuming that he uh, was trying to say that Yosha wasn't Torah observant. Uh, if that being the case, then you know why bother? Uh, you know, read the uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Yosha says that that he uh, did not come to annul or to do away with any part of the Torah, but came to affirm it. And he uh, said that anybody who would uh, suggest that any aspect of the Torah has been annulled or done away with will be comp will be called what uh, actually Paul chose as a name, lowly and little. He even uh, so said that uh, that someone like Paul, a wolf in sheep's clothing, would come into the uh, uh, and fool people uh, into uh, believing that uh, they could uh, circumvent the uh, the Torah, that there would be a a way to get around the Torah, so that the Torah did not have to be observed. And what he said is that all of those who are without the Torah are not known by him and therefore are sent away from him, excluded therefore from heaven. It is extraordinarily important if we're going to communicate that which comes from God, that what we say is accurate. And when we misuse words, when we misconvey names, then our testimony is no longer accurate. Now, a great example would be Torah. Christians are wont to call it law. doesn't mean law. It means teaching. It means guidance. Christians are wont to call Yahweh Lord. And yet, Yahweh says that the title Lord is Satan's. Christians feel free to rename Yahusha, a name that tells you, who he is and what he's doing, that it's Yahweh saving us, to a name that whose only common denominator is with a pagan god. They wish to give him a title, or which they've now transitioned to a last name, that speaks of being drugged. All okay with them. All okay with them to, uh, to forget about the Torah because they have their Gospels. It's just a sea of lies, of ignoring the facts, of disregarding what God said, of changing words so that they convey an entirely different meaning. It's a religion that is conceived of lies that has deceived so many with these lies. We'll be back tomorrow.